There's a question that atheists ask really often. This question is so common that they constantly talk about it in forums, on social media, in videos. Perhaps this is one of the most important pillars of disbelief. On the other hand, it can also confuse Muslims. Here's the question. The diseases, evils and calamities that happen to us, why does God allow these bad things to happen? If there's a creator, then he wouldn't have allowed such calamities to happen. But is it really so? First of all, the existence of evil in the universe cannot be proof for the absence of a creator. Why? Let me explain. For example, let's imagine a gallery or an art exhibition. Depending on their interests, the people that are visiting them may or may not like the works of art inside. When someone who doesn't know anything about art sees a famous and valuable painting, they might say, this painting doesn't make any sense. I only see irregular and chaotic lines here. However, for someone who knows about art, that painting might have excellent qualities and have many meanings behind every detail. Yes, someone who doesn't understand art may not like the work, but they cannot say this work doesn't have an artist. Just like that, a person who's looking at the universe may find some calamities ugly, or he might not like the diseases that are happening to him, or he can be unable to understand the reasons behind them. But none of these things can be a proof of the absence of God. Because even saying that there's ugliness indicates a doer. So an atheist cannot claim the absence of God by pointing to the calamities. Then we can confidently say that this is not an issue about the absence of God and it cannot be used as a proof for it by the atheists. But then what is the reason why human beings struggle with all these difficulties, disasters and catastrophes? Let's have a look at this. You can say if something is flawed or not by looking at the purpose for which it was made. If something works well in accordance with its purpose, we can say it's of good quality. It's nice, it works perfectly. But if it doesn't work as intended, we say that it's ugly and flawed. For example, the purpose of a library is to provide a quiet and peaceful environment for people to read or study. Now, could someone who visits a library and doesn't like the silence say things like, why is this place so quiet? Why is there no activity here? No one is talking. What a faulty and flawed design. Could he criticize it like that? Of course not, because a library is supposed to be this way. It's an environment that provides silence. It's its purpose. So the fact that the library is quiet indicates that it is a quality and a good library. Or imagine a gym. Someone is visiting there for the first time and sees that the people are tired and sweaty, lying on the floor, exhausted. Could you say things like, who is persecuting these people? What a pity, what a cruel and flawed environment. Of course he couldn't, because the purpose of this place is to make people physically improve themselves through struggle. Just like in these examples, this universe is created to serve a certain purpose. We can only understand whether the events in the universe are good or bad by looking at the purpose of the universe. And only the creator of the universe can tell us this. Among the purposes of its creation, recognizing the names of Allah comes first. Our ultimate purpose is to be a good slave of Allah. And in order to achieve this, we have to truly know his names and attributes first. Many other purposes can be counted as to why the universe was created in this way, such as making progress by struggling with trials, showing Allah our commitment by passing the tests of patience, and so on. If you look at the universe in light of these purposes, then it's necessary to have troubles, calamities, and diseases. For example, if there were no diseases, could we know the name of Allah as Shafi, the healer, or the name Ar Razak, the provider, if there was no hunger? If there was no tests of gratitude and patience, could spiritual progress be achieved? No. Then the universe and the events which we call calamities within the universe are necessary for humanity's duty to get to know Allah and to increase their rank through struggle. Therefore, we cannot look at these events as flaws or evil things. As towards eternity, we need your support. We are a charity organization that aims to spread the message of Islam to the entire world in eight languages. With your support, you can help people convert to Islam, give up haram, start praying, wear hijab, learn to read the Quran, and so on. By donating just $1 a day, you can have your share in all these good deeds, inshallah. Donate to Towards Eternity, and don't let this Ramadan pass without making a difference. Another point is that something is either beautiful in and of itself, or is beautiful in terms of its results and outcomes. Even many issues that we think of as evil can bring many beauties in terms of their results, because everything is known and understood through its opposite. For example, if there was no cold, the concept of heat couldn't be known. It couldn't be understood. Without darkness, light cannot be known. Similarly, the events that we describe as disorder, evil, and ugliness are actually matters that enable us to realize the order, goodness, and beauty in the universe. 
I mean, think about it. Imagine if there was no ugliness. Could we recognize beauty? Or could we speak of order where there was no disorder? So the existence of opposite concepts is necessary to understand them. A person who is constantly living in order and beauty can no longer understand the value of these things. He cannot even notice them. We can evaluate natural events such as earthquakes in this manner. For example, earthquakes can seem evil from the outside. It's an event that shakes the earth intensely and is considered to be a calamity. At face value, they may be perceived as very harmful and bad. But in fact, the earthquakes tell us that there's actually order in the universe. Yes, earthquakes remind people that the earth does not shake on vast majority of the time and make us realize that such an orderly and stable earth is actually a blessing. We may not be aware of this reality, but when we look at the big picture and look at all the positive and seemingly negative things that are happening in the universe, we see that bad things happen very, very rarely compared to good things, just enough times to make us realize the opposite. So the abnormal events in the universe make people who are used to normal conditions realize that even the things that they think as normal are in fact blessings. The thing that makes us notice the order is the disorder. The thing that makes us the beauty beautiful is the ugliness of the ugly. So even the matters that are assumed to be in a disorder are in fact beautiful and serve a purpose. Another point is that constant, uninterrupted beauty makes people forget about the hereafter by making them heedless. The beauty of this world might intoxicate people. For a person who forgets his duty in life and forgets about the hereafter, troubles are actually a warning and a wake-up call. A reckless, deluded person cannot be aware of why the events around him are happening and can make mistakes in understanding them. At that point, someone should wake him up to reality. Waking him up would be the greatest favor that can be done to him. Just like that, the human being who was sent to this world to know Allah sometimes forgets his duty. Contrary to his mission, he can become immersed in extremely insignificant things. Some days he falls into sin in such a way that he even forgets what it means to regret. So in reality, it's not evil that Allah wakes him up from his heedless, sinful state with calamities and diseases, but it's pure mercy and beauty. Because when you look at it, whoever experiences a problem starts thinking more about the hereafter compared to other people and he turns to worship. So even from this point of view, we should see calamities not as evil, but as blessings to be thankful for. As human beings, we try to learn what is beneficial and what is harmful to us throughout our lives. And most of the time, we understand the logic of the events and the wisdom behind them later. For example, the slap of a mother to prevent her child from touching the stove heater is actually a blessing for him. The child isn't aware of this yet. He can neither recognize the danger of the stove, nor can he immediately understand the reason for the slap. But when he understands the danger of the burning stove later on, he realizes that the slap was actually a result of compassion, an act of love. So if you look at it from the point of view of mercy, in a real sense, there is no ugliness and evil. Just like in these examples, there may be some warnings that Allah sends our way. Sometimes we don't understand them. We may think of them as bad things, but in fact, it's the opposite. It's an act of pure mercy. Sometimes it takes time for us to realize that. Just think about it. Knowing that even the slap of a mother has a wisdom, a logical reason behind it, how can there be no mercy or purpose in a warning that is sent by Allah, who showers human beings with so many blessings with his infinite love and care? Yes, the human being is like a soldier on duty, who is trying to understand the universe and get to know his creator. Think about the blessings of Allah and the fact that he created so many beauties. As the one who gives the feeling of compassion to all the mothers, would Allah ever intend any harm to you in a real sense? As the one who puts benefit in all things and manages everything with great wisdom, would he ever create disorganized and useless matters? Sometimes we need to change our perspective and evaluate things holistically. And this issue is certainly one of them.